Hello, beautiful people of RCCG House of Grace Assembly. I bring you greetings from my household this morning. So, season greetings to every one of you, and um, I thank God for His blessings upon you, upon your household. I thank God for how far God has kept you, He has kept us alive. Um, despite the challenges, despite the, you know, the events that has happened all through this year, God has been faithful. God has, you know, has been kind to us. Um, it's not by our own power. It's not by our own might that we have seen this very day. And so, therefore, I want you to, you know, to rejoice, um, celebrate, because the scripture says, if it was not the Lord who was on our side, so, you know, um, you being alive today is a testament that God indeed is faithful and that God can be trusted. Um, God has seen you through. We've gone through so many phases of trials, of trials, of tribulations this year. <laughs> but you know what? More importantly, um, you overcame because God was on your side. Um, can you turn to your neighbor and say, I overcame because God was on my side? Um, if that neighbor is not talking, you can turn to another person and say to that person and say to him, I overcame because God was on my side. You know, that's a confirmation of the word of God in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, where he says, he would not leave you. He says, he would not forsake you. I love it how the Amplified Version puts it, Amplified Version Classic. You know, the Amplified Version Classic emphasizes on that theme, I would not leave you. He said it three times. He said, never will I, never, never will I leave you, nor forsake you, that you might boldly say, the Lord is with me. He says he would help you. So, you know, we thank God for the help that we have experienced this year. Um, many people we started this year with, um, it's not because we are in any way better than them. It's not because we prayed or fasted or did anything special, um, but it's just a confirmation of the word of God that says, I would have mercy on whom I would have mercy. I would have compassion on whom I would have compassion. It's not of him that runneth. It's not of him that wills. It's not of him that tries to do anything special, but it's by the mercy of the Lord. And that mercy that has prevailed over your life, over my life, over the lives of our family members, both extended and direct you know, and immediate, that mercy would never expire in the name of Jesus. Oh, I declare for someone listening to me right now, I ask that the mercy of the Lord Will never depart from your life in the name of Jesus. Um, so just like I said earlier on, seasons, greetings to you all. Um, it's the period of festivity. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of rejoicing. And um, what are we really celebrating? We are celebrating the goodness of the Lord. We are celebrating the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord was made evident by the gifts of a special being, a special being, <laughs> a being who was sent from heaven to perform one divine assignment. And that assignment was to bring about a reconciliation back to the Father. You know, you remember um, in the Garden of Eden, when man lost out his place, man lost his place because of sin. Um, there was an excommunication from, you know, from, from God's presence. Um, um, we were separated from the common wealth of God, right? We're separated. But, you know, the special gift of God in the person of Jesus uh, was given to us. Um, and he had one primary assignment. And the assignment was that he would bring us back to the Father. He would restore us back to the Father. In bringing us back to the Father, one thing was sure. Um, the assurance is that not only do we return back to the Father, but everything we had lost, which the Father had 
initially given to man at creation was also restored um, so it means that glory is being restored it means that vitality is being restored it means that you know um, intimacy with the father is being restored it means that everything which speaks of life and godliness are being restored and so why don't you rejoice this morning and say thank you jesus for coming to this world thank you jesus for choosing to come for me thank you jesus for not declining that mission to come to this earth just in order to bring me back to the father thank you jesus for choosing to save me hallelujah praise the name of the lord jesus now um it's 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 an unusual service this morning um you know um i was just in 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 the course of you know preparing for how the year was going to run and then you know i i just thought that um it was going to be necessary for us right as a family of god we come together and we have a celebration you know celebrating um celebrating the lord right celebrating the birth of our lord jesus christ yes some you might have read it somewhere in places some said oh jesus was not born on december 25th jesus was not born on so 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 day and all that see we are not bothered about when jesus was born all we are doing is that we are celebrating the awareness we are celebrating the assurance of our salvation because jesus was born <laughs> you know he does not you know uh, we are not bothered if it was December, January, February, March. The you know the main thing is that Jesus was born. <laughs> the scripture confirms that to us. You know, you read Isaiah chapter seven verse fourteen. It says, "And you would see a sign." It says, "And a you know a virgin would conceive." It says there would be a sign. There would be a sign. And the scripture also confirms to us in the book of Isaiah chapter nine. It says, "For unto us a son, a child is born, and to us a son is given." You know that's Isaiah chapter nine verse six. You then go into the scriptures in Matthew matthew chapter 1 verse 21 he says and you will call his name jesus for he will save his people from their sins so you know what it is a confirmation that jesus was born <laughs> hallelujah jesus was born so what you know so i just felt that you know um uh, you know when there is a you know um, um it, it, where we come from you know um when a child is born there is always a celebration that happens you know um it, it's always a bundle of joy something that would would would, would cause us to rejoice and all that so i just felt oh you know what today's service let today's service be a service whereby every one of us come we come to rejoice we come to celebrate we come to give thanks and more importantly <laughs> we come and we have item seven seven or what do you call it is it menu um, item seven right um you know um just to show gratitude to god um quickly i just want to give us a charge you know there's a charge that the lord had put upon my heart um for a while um you know towards the build up of today and then um, the charge was why give thanks why give thanks uh, many of you would agree with me that the year in itself 2023 has been a year of hops and downs <laughs> it's been a year of challenge it's been a year of struggle it's been a year of whereby some persons have had to cry it's been a year of where some persons have had to you know <laughs> uh, they've been they've gone through I mean you know they've gone through Shige Pro Max um, you know for lack of better word you know, Shige Pro Max is when your high C Shige in uh, in a pro maximum level, right? They've gone through all kind of things. Some have gone through defeats, whereas some have gone through victories. Um, but irrespective of whatever um, might have happened in the year 2023, one thing still stands for sure. What is it? god's faithfulness god's faithfulness stands for sure irrespective of whatever you might have gone through 
irrespective of whatever you might have gone through god's faithfulness stands for sure um, and i said why give thanks um, the bible was admonishing us um, you know in the book of first Thessalonians chapter 5 um, first Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 16 to 18 from verse 16 to 18 it says rejoice evermore rejoice evermore it means let there be a cause for rejoicing much more than you might have done in previous time the word evermore means that your rejoicing must be in continuum your rejoicing must be in continuum it means that your rejoicing must not be depleted the level of your rejoicing must not in any way diminish so rejoicing must be in what a continuum a progressive continuum it says rejoice evermore can you turn to that neighbor and say neighbor rejoice evermore <laughs> if that neighbor is not saying something you turn to another neighbor and say neighbor rejoice evermore hallelujah verse 17 says pray without season now it then went further to say in verse 18 which is where i'm going to it says in everything give thanks did you see that it says in everything give thanks why should you give thanks it says because this is the will of the father this is the will of god so when we give thanks what we have done is that we operate in the center of god's will so when you see a being that has refused to give thanks it means that being has ceased from operating within the core of god's will so a way you know a man is in the center in the core of god's will is that in every circumstances whether good or bad in every circumstances whether in their disadvantage or at their advantage there is a voice of rejoicing that proceeds from their mouth evermore evermore means in continuum so can you scream and rejoice can you leap for joy wherever you are right now and shout a great hallelujah 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 <laughs> shout hallelujah praise god so you know i'm just going to read house to us the five benefits why you must give thanks because you know the thing i said is why give thanks you know in this period of the year many of us begin to take stock of our lives uh <laughs> i saw uh, i saw something uh um uh, on instagram some days back where somebody was doing like an audit or an assessment of the goal accomplishment in the year um, the first thing the person wrote was in so 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 yeah buy a new phone uh, uh you know the person did not buy a phone but what did the person do the person changed the goal he changed it to buy a phone case and he marked it complete it says try and relax you know maybe go on vacation and the person yeah i mean some of us might have seen that thing right why was that person doing that you know he did that so that he could <laughs> make peace with himself <laughs> a man who learns to rejoice is a man who has made peace with himself irrespective of whatever is going on in his life <laughs> the reason many of us don't rejoice is because we have not made peace with ourselves uh you don't make you know how do you know you have not made peace with yourself you have not made peace with yourself is when when you live your life in comparison with other people you say this guy has done this this guy accomplished this but this is where i am who told you that you both have the same life manuscripts no 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 no. you don't have the same life manuscripts god has not drawn the same you know has not drawn the same um, 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 map for your lives and so what you need to do in order for you to rejoice is that you must be at peace with yourself <laughs> you must be at peace with yourself and what do i mean by being at peace with yourself is that you don't see yourself as a 
failure, irrespective of whatever has happened to you. You don't see yourself as a failure, irrespective of whatever you are going through. The Bible says to us that weeping may endure in the night, but joy comes in the morning. I declare for someone listening to me right now, your season of joy is here. I say it is your morning day. It is your morning season. Oh, can you speak to five persons around you and say, it is my morning season. 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 Is my morning season. In the name of Jesus. So it says that though weeping endures in the night, it tells you that every form of tribulation has an expiry date. <laughs> the Bible says, and it shall come to pass. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's not going to be forever because it has an expiry date. Barrenness has an expiry date. Lack has an expiry date. Infirmity has an expiry date. You know, tribulation has an expiry date. And so what you don't do and you know, what you, what you must learn never to do is to glorify your problem beyond the saving power of Jesus. Jesus, because in the name of Jesus, there is power to save. In the name of Jesus, there is power to deliver. It says, and you will call his name Jesus because it will bring forth about some form of deliverance, some form of comfort. I speak into your life. What ever might have negated the cancer, the principles, the plans, the purposes of God in your life before this time. They are expended, they are expired in the name of Jesus. I declare they expire now. I declare they expire now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So why give thanks? Why give thanks? The first reason why you give thanks is because thanksgiving is a command. Thanksgiving is a command. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 tells us that thanksgiving is what? It's a command. It says, Rejoice evermore. Psalms 150, verse 6. Psalm 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath, if you are living, can you give God praise? <laughs> I say, If you are living, can you give God praise? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. When you know David was writing in Psalm 150, verse 6, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, it's not just only humans he was talking to. And that's why you would see, you know, uh, uh, um, theologian said, when you see the trees bending to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, that what they are actually doing is they are giving God praise. <laughs> Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The second thing you need to know about Thanksgiving, because this is a chart for us this morning. The second thing you need to know about Thanksgiving is that you know is that thanksgiving unlocks doors and break barriers thanksgiving unlocks doors and it does what and it breaks barriers acts of apostles chapter 16 verse 25 to 26 acts of apostles chapter 16 from verse 25 to 26 the scripture said that at midnight Paul and Silas, they prayed and they gave thanks to God. And every door that had been shut against them opened on their own accord. <laughs> oh, my brother, my sister, the reason why that door that you've been knocking probably has not opened up is because you've not given enough praise. <laughs> yes, you have prayed, but why don't you switch into thanksgiving? Why don't you switch into praises? <laughs> why don't you switch by the special grace of God next week Sunday, next week Sunday, the 31st of December in our morning service, it's going to be a time of reckless praise. <laughs> you know, the theme for you know next week Sunday's praise would be perfected praise praise perfected it's a praise that perfects everything it's a praise that brings about perfection in everything you do <laughs> so you know it's going to be a praise reckless i mean 
reckless praise. Uh, by the special grace of God, uh, it would be a service where, you know, we would not necessarily even need cheer. I, I don't think we would need cheer. We would not need cheer. We want to come and recklessly praise God, right? You, you know, the way David praised God, the, day, the way David danced, and, and David danced, you know, it, it was a reckless sort of praise. That's what, what you know, we will be doing next week Sunday. Perfected praise. Uh, but but, but it, it's just to set the tone for us ahead. He unlocks doors and he breaks barriers. The third thing you need to understand about Thanksgiving is that Thanksgiving compels God's involvement. Thanksgiving compels God's involvement. John chapter 11 verse 41 to 42. John chapter 11 verse 41 to 42. Jesus was before a tomb of a man who had died for four days. If it was immediate, that could have been possible because the organs would still be living. I mean, <laughs> you can resuscitate a man within few times, few minutes when he has passed away. But we have someone here who had been dead for days. Not only was he dead for days, he had been, so, you know, they had administered all sort of burial rites upon him. So uh, it was in a state whereby, you know, all hopes was lost. Nothing could ever happen again. And Jesus got there. And Jesus was crying. And everybody looked at him and they said, come on. <laughs> you should have come much earlier while he was still, you know, he was, he was sick. Uh, oh, yes, he loved him. Blah, 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 blah. The sister said, oh, you know what? I wish you had come earlier, but I know that. And Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the light. And the, and the sister said, yes, I know on the resurrection day, my brother is going to rise up. Okay, And Jesus Christ said, no, just wait and see the glory of God. And he got to the tomb and he said, they should roll away the tomb. They should roll away the stones. Oh, I declare for someone, everything that has stopped you from stepping into your new season, the stones are rolled away. <laughs> oh, I say the stones are rolled away. The stones are rolled away. The stones are rolled away. And so Jesus said, they roll away the stones. After Jesus had instructed, they roll away the stones. And the scripture said, and he looked up and he gave thanks to his father. He says, thank you because I know you always hear me. By Jesus doing that, what he had done was to compel God's involvement in that matter. <laughs> so when you give thanks, what you do is that you compel God's involvement in your life. You bring God to be a part of your journey. And that's why I said we are praising God because we are praising God into the new year. What are we trying to do is that we are going to compel god we are compelling the involvement of god um what we thanking god in advance is that to say that we are not going to go into the year 2024 just on our own accord just on our own wisdom we will not go into the year 2024 because we have anything scripted out no 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 we would live according to god's scripts we would live according to god's counsel we would live according to god's ordinances and that is what you do when you give thanks because when you give thanks what you have done is that you have compelled the god's involvement i declare over someone listening right away you would experience a divine involvement in your life that your business that you have been struggling with receives god's divine involvement oh that project that seems not to be going the way it is required oh masheda bakumbre hefradoska I declare divine involvement in the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving compels divine involvement. <laughs> it compels the divine involvement. The fourth one, before the last. Thanksgiving provokes the law of increase. Thanksgiving provokes the law of increase. In Mark chapter 6, verse 41. Mark chapter 6 verse 41 and John chapter 6 verse 11. John chapter 6 verse 11. Jesus was in a situation. In those two accounts, Jesus was in a situation where he had demand 
which was more than supply. You know, for those of you who did economics, there is the law of demand and there is the law of supply. Now, there is something called the point of equilibrium. Equilibrium is when your demand meets with your supply. Now, you know, for those of you, you would still remember your economics, then there is something they call elasticity of demand, inelastic demand, elastic supply, blah, 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 you know, inelastic and all of those things, right? And they explain some of those parameters to you where one is greater than or equals to one or one is equals to, you know, there are some permutations there. But in the case of Jesus here, <laughs> we had a demand that far outweighed the supply. You had a multitude of people and you had just a handful of resources. <laughs> the disciples came to meet him and said to him, if we have a month's wage, we can't make anything available for these guys. Let us send them away to go fend for themselves. And Jesus said something in that space there. He says, what do we have? <laughs> Thank God that a man was wise enough to identify that little with God is much. Little with man, rather, he is much with God. <laughs> little with man is what? Is much with God. Yes, Samson had just the jaw of an axe. And with that, he wrought great deliverance. Gideon had just only three men, 300 men, rather. He had just 300 men. And with 300 men, he commanded great results. <laughs> oh, Moses had just a staff. And that staff became the rod of God. <laughs> oh, David had just a sling and five stones. And that sling and five stones commanded great results. I declare for someone today, your resource that do not look like it is will command great results. Oh, you can hear me. I say your resort that does not look like it will command great results. Your, because when you give God thanks, it will compel or it will provoke the law of increase. And Jesus gave thanks. After Jesus gave thanks, the scripture said he broke the bread and the bread began to multiply. You know, I was speaking to the workers yesterday and the ministers yesterday. I said one of the things that you need to understand, one of the victories that we have by the reason of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is that we came into a realm of multiplication. I was reading to them, you know, I was I was exalting them from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 3 to 4. And in verse 4, he was talking about, and thou hast multiplied the nation <laughs> and he has increased their joy. Oh, I ask that God would indeed multiply you. I ask that God would indeed increase your joy in the name of Jesus. So he says thou, the thanksgiving provokes the law of increase. <laughs> and finally, finally, thanksgiving qualifies you to host God. Thanksgiving qualifies you to host God. Now, guys, we need to host God in this season. We need to host God in this season. And why do I say that? We need to host God in this season because we will need God so, 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 so much. We will need God what? So, so, so much. One with God is majority. Like, you know, the first scripture where, we, you know, where we're talking about the law of increase. We say less with men is much with God. In Psalms 22 verse 3, Psalms 22 verse 3, the Bible says to us that God inhabits the praises of his people. And in Psalms 100 verse 4 to 5, it says we should enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praises. And that's why, you know, we see well, we're entering into the year 2024 with perfected praises. It says enter into his gate with thanksgiving and his courts with praises. So thanksgiving qualifies us to host God because a man who lives in thanks all the day of his life would be a man who is grateful and a man who is grateful would always be in the center of god's cancer <sighs> oh so we have said thanksgiving right but i just want to admonish every one of us 
in this season of love, show gratitude to people around you. People who have helped you. People who have supported you. I mean, it could be as simple as a thank you message to that person. Thank you for praying with me when I was trusting God for something. Thank you for your kind words that you sent to me. Thank you for the assistance that you provided. This is a time for you to, be, to show gratitude. Show gratitude to your parents. Show gratitude to your siblings. Show gratitude to your, to your, to your employers, to your employees. Show gratitude to everybody around you. <laughs> Show gratitude. You know, the reason why many times we don't show gratitude is because we have a sense of entitlement. Oh, yes, my father is paying my school fees. He has to pay my school fees because that's his responsibility. My husband is providing the food that we eat in the house. He has to provide the food because it's his responsibility. But guys, hear this. When you give thanks, you have seen what i said what thanksgiving will do yeah you know there is a song that um, um paul aikida i wrote song it says Moshori reo eleda mi mo he says uh, um uh, i think tomo ba dupe ori ano ari o mirongba what what does that mean it says when a child shows gratitude for what he had received yesterday he would obtain a new one the next day so be, be, be gracious to people i mean show gratitude say thank you to them you could go a step further you could credit their accounts i mean there is nothing too small you can credit somebody's account oh you know what you can credit somebody's account or you can credit somebody's phone with credits you don't need to go and break the bank before you show gratitude. You can load the person's mobile phone with text with, with um credit cards, or you can load his bank account. It's a way of showing gratitude, or you can buy gifts for them because God loves a man who lives in gratitude is a man who understands love. And one thing you must know about love is that where there is love, there is giving. The Bible says, for God so loved, and because God so loved, God gave. A man who has not learned the concept of giving is a man who has not learned the concept of love. <laughs> and you don't know love when you don't know God. So, I want to admonish you guys this day. Show gratitude. Don't be an ungrateful people. Show gratitude to your parents. Show gratitude to your loved ones, to your siblings, to your friend. Show gratitude to the shepherds over you. You know, this is a dodgy subject I try to avoid so that you don't think that, oh, pastor wants you to give him something. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, that's not what we're talking about. Um, I have seen the power of God being made manifest by reason of giving thanks. You know, recently there was something I was supposed to get and I could not get. I mean, I tried everything and I did not know how I was going to make a request for that thing. So the Lord said I should do something. And I did something. I, you know, I blessed our father in the Lord and our mother in the Lord, um, Daddy Gio and Mommy Gio, in the just concluded Congress. I blessed them with some amount of money and <laughs> I just wrote money for refreshment as you wait upon the Lord during the Congress. You'll be amazed how God did the turnaround and what I was expecting and I could not request or I could not ask miraculously was delivered. <laughs> I'm not saying you give people things because, um, you know, no, 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 no. But I'm just telling you that it is blessed to give. Give thanks. You know, kind words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, you thank God. The second is you thank men. 
the relationships that God has placed around you. It is very important. Because when you do so, God in his infinite mercy would lift you up because he sees you as someone who is grateful and definitely he can trust you for the next phase of your life. No form of gratitude is too small to give. Sex message, a call, a prayer, a card, a gift. <laughs> I've told you. And for those of you, maybe this year, you have not given your parents anything I want to beg you by the mercy of the Lord. <laughs> if you have not given your parents anything this year, I want to beg you by the mercy of the Lord. Make sure you buy something for them. Even if it's a small bottle of wine, even if it's a small, um, you know, um, um, you know, endomy or something, make sure you there is a blessing that comes when you show gratitude to your parents. <laughs> oh, please, I want to beg you to do that. And um, from my own side here, yeah, by the special grace of God, my family and I, you know, will be hosting you today to a celebration. So, please, after service today, um, we have prepared items you know seven or is it um what whatever you call it item is it menu seven menu item seven right which is menu menu we have provided that um as a token of our gift to you from my household to say thank you all for being a part of this family in the year 2023 it was something god dropped upon our hearts and so we want to say thank you thank you we love you thank you for praying for us thank you for believing in us thank you for supporting us thank you for consistently raising up our hands up in your prayers in your prayers and in your prayers we know that god has gone ahead of you to do great wonders in your life and i pray for you that it would be a great and amazing 2024 for you in the name of jesus so please don't rush after service because i believe everything has been set for you to so have a great day a great time you know of thanks of relaxation of celebration in church today in the name of Jesus. Um, before I leave your view this morning, I uh, just want to reiterate a um, certain announcement for us, which I consider to be a special announcement. Um, so, like I mentioned, next week Sunday, December 31st, it was while I was preparing for this, the Lord just you know, said, next week Sunday we devoted to strictly thanksgiving. And he called it perfected praises. Perfected what? praises so next week sunday which is december 31st by the special grace of god we'll be having just one service um, and it's going to be a time of praise a time of praise prophetic praises prophetic praises prophetic praises prophetic praises come to praise god like you have never done before um, so that's going to be happening by 7 30 a.m in the morning and in the evening of that day, we will be having our crossover service, which will be starting with an Holy Communion by 9 p.m. So, please, please, the Communion service starts by 9 p.m. on Sunday, um, the 31st. We will be crossing over into the New Year. So, by 9 p.m., we have the Communion service immediately after the communion service we are moving straight into the crossover service <laughs> it's going to be a great time to see god it's going to be a great time you know come prepared to receive what god has in stock for us you know three two weeks ago or three weeks ago i can't remember i was sharing with the ministers and the and the, and, and the um and 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 the, and the workers 
the theme for the month for the year already <laughs> god had given us the theme a week months ago so i was just telling them the theme for the month the theme for the year rather the year 2024 when god gave us the theme for the year 2023 he it says it's time to fly i mean um, and we saw the hand of god show up in so many lives so many you know so many destinies were transformed we had i mean we've never experienced it before in this year alone in house of grace assembly we had about three weddings um that we had i think three or four if i'm correct that we had uh, this year we had not multiple bets right that, that that we experienced we had change of jobs we had you know divine relocations for a number of people um uh, and god you know it's because god said it is time to fly meaning it's time to come into the fulfillment of that which i prepared for you ah uh, so in the year 2024 you don't want to lose out from what god has in stock for you so you know what where you need to get that information from is on sunday december 31st for the watch nine service that begins 9 p.m the communion service is very essential because anyone who would cross over you know it was an instruction god gave to moses when you're going to cross over there has to be a participation in a communion that brings us as a people together so there is a signature of god the communion would guarantee the signature of god upon us and um, by the special grace of god on the 5th of january we'll be having our first holy ghost service for the year if you have never attended the holy ghost service before all throughout this year 2023 i want to appeal to you do not miss the first Holy Ghost service of the year it's a plane on the 5th of january and on the 7th of january would be our annual thanksgiving the 7th of january will be our annual thanksgiving you know all of these details will be communicated to us in the course of the week um but i just needed to reiterate the importance of these meetings and i look forward to seeing you next week sunday and i look forward to seeing you at the watch night service because i know definitely you are making it in the year 2024 so in advance on behalf of myself my wife and my children we're saying to you merry christmas and happy new year in advance we love you we love you. We love you. God bless you. And see you next week Sunday. Amen. Shalom.